Hello, uh, welcome to the channel. My name is Victor and I'm going to be your anchor for this training. So this is the business analysis training and we have looked at uh, quite a lot of the knowledge areas. And so this is chapter six and we're going to be looking at strategy analysis. So the strategy analysis knowledge area, we want to be looking at some elements, we want to be looking at some tasks that a business analyst is to carry out if it's to effect change or if she's to effect change. So one of the things you want to be doing in strategy analysis is, is to identify strategic, tactical business needs and see how to respond to those needs. And of course, you have to assess the risks that you have and align change strategy to other levels of strategies. Now, some of the tasks you're going to be doing is you need to first analyze the current state of the business. You need to first analyze the current state of the product. You need to first analyze the current state state of the service that you're trying to improve on, you're trying to change. And what are the elements? How are you going to be able to do that? You need to look at business needs, organizational structures, the capabilities and processes of the business, the technology and infrastructure, current IT systems. And at times to cause some change, to do uh, some innovations in an enterprise might be for you to introduce some new technology. Take, for instance, you have staff uh, scattered all over different parts of the country. You want a smooth uh, way for them to like collaborate, for them to interact, and so that they can have stand-up meetings uh, more frequently, and so that there can be synergy between uh, all of the staff in the different parts of the country, and so that they can share ideas, so that they can collaborate more, so that you can have speed in service delivery. You need to look at how they do communications as at now, as at the point in time when you want to do this strategy analysis. Another thing you want to do is to analyze how they currently communicate, right? What kind of IT systems do they use? Do they use just WhatsApp? Do they use Telegram? Do they use uh, Slack? Do they use uh, which tools they use to collaborate? Because here you're trying to analyze the current of the business so that you can now propose better way for them to collaborate, better way for them to actually improve those systems. And of course, policies. Most organizations have policies. Policies that have to do with health policy, technology policy. They can even have information security policy. They have work policy. They have dress policy. They have all sorts of policies. Now, when you're trying to respond to change, or rather, when you're trying to respond to needs so that you can effect change, you need to look at the current policies that the organization has. Now, business architecture, how is it structured? Internal assets, external influencers. There are some businesses that are very, very, very much influenced by outsiders. It can be external stakeholders, it can be government agency, it can be persons that have to uh, grant them or organizations that have to grant them license and the rest. Here, we're also going to look at defining future state. Where are we heading to? Then, of course, we have to look at risks. Then we can now start defining our change strategy. So that means that you cannot just propose a change strategy if you don't look at what you have already. Take, for instance, in doing change strategy, you want to do gap analysis. Gap analysis have to do with you checking if it's profits you want to make change to. You want to cause growth. You need to look at what the current profits we have now in the organization. Then you examine all the other factors. Then you are looking at where do we want to head to? What's the difference? And how do we bridge that gap? So that's what you call gap analysis. And there are documents and there are templates to this we're going to be examining later on in the hands-on section of this course. So let's move over to st uh, strategy analysis. Uh, this has to do with the percent it accounts for in, the, in the, any of the exams, either the professional or the associate level. Strategy analysis. So strategy defines the most effective way to apply the capabilities of an enterprise in order to reach a desired set of goals and objectives. So strategy has to do with what's your plan, how you're going to do it. Strategies may exist for the entire enterprise of a definition, a division, I mean, department or a region. 
It can also apply to a product, can apply to a project, or even for an iteration. That is the, a level of change. Because you can say we want to move from point A to point D to effect change in organization. Most of the times you have to say, okay, I, I'm not going to move from point A to point B once. You want to stagger it. You want to have some kind of iterations. You want to have it in stages. So you can have a strategy from point A to point B. Most of the time, strategy analysis, you don't have to say overnight, you're going to have that good. You're going to have that change. Most of the times, it can come in stages. You can say, okay, we want to make social amount of profit by this time, first quarter, then social amount of profit by second quarter, social amount of profit by third quarter, social amount of profit by fourth quarter. So you can always review at the end of every quarter. So your strategy can be for the enterprise, can be for a division, uh, can be for a department under a division, can be for a region, geographical location, can be for a product you have, a service you have, a project you have, or for an iteration. And some of the tasks, like I've said earlier on, that you're going to be doing is you're going to be first analyzing the current state, you're going to look at the future, where you're heading to, then you look at the risks. There are some changes you want to make. They are associated with some risk factors, right? So you need to consider them before you start embarking on defining what is your change. And some of the mnemonics you could use to address this is ADAD. ADAD. So what do you think is the most important, what do you think is most important to analyze the current state of an enterprise before adopting a solution? Geographical location, your competence, your capabilities. These are things you should really look at, right? Your goals even, what your goals are, your organizational structure, how you're using technology, what are your current policies, what, what does the board allow, and what do you tend to not allow? So those things, you need to consider them to come up with what your final strategy is going to be like. And one of the reasons why you want to analyze your current state is that you want to understand the reasons why an enterprise will need a change. You might need a change for strategic purposes. Like at South Tech, there are some changes we're trying to create. And I, this morning, I did a meeting with some of the team members, and I was explaining some of the reasons why we need to uh, uh, change our approach in the way we deliver some services. Because if your team members don't understand the reasons why, it might be difficult to like holistically effect those changes. You need to understand why and some aspect of how it operates and what could be directly or indirectly affected by the change. Let's say a company that wants to, because of, let's say, cost of um, delivering services, then I said, okay, uh, team members are no longer, no longer going to work or a company that's trying to cut cost of, uh, uh, or trying to cost the, cut their cost. They can say, okay, we want to, team members are going to come work hybrid. They're going to work uh, off the office and they're going to work two days or three days within the office. Now, a lot of things are going to change. So you need to analyze what is going to change either directly or indirectly because some team members are not going to be working every day within the organization or within the facility. So you need to understand that. Analyzing current state. The starting point for any change in is understanding the why the change is needed. Potential change is triggered by problems, opportunities that can cannot be addressed without altering the current stage. Yes, like I said, for instance, for a company that says, okay, we want to serve a more global audience. We want to cut cost. Now, if we're going to serve a more global audience, that means we need to do shipping, we need to do deliveries, depending on the kind of service they render. If you say we want to cost, cut cost in terms of expenses, uh, which is also an investment uh, on the team members, we want to do hybrid so that um, they just work two or three days within the office and they stay off the rest of the days. So this can create opportunities and can also constitute problems. So you have to very well 
analyze where you are, where you are currently. Now, some of the inputs that is going to help you analyze your current state is that you need to first get some of the things you've gotten from elicitation. You know, elicitation, we actually listed all of the things that, we, that are our requirements and we now had some needs. So those needs that we have as an elicitation result that we have during the elicitation stage of the knowledge area, we will not need them as an input for us to analyze the current stage. It's like you want to make bread. Some of your outputs in farming, uh, let's say you want to use flour. Some of your, farm, your, your output in farming, it's not what's going to be your input for you to now make flour. So the, an output of something else can be your input to something else. Just like you want to make um, X. So you can decide to say, I have a farm and the farm is going to give me X and those X are output from the farm. Then of course, if I'm going to maybe make sandwich or do some fries or whatever, that egg is not going to be my input. So that's how it works here. So what is going to be your output from elicitation is not going to be your input for you doing strategy analysis. And so the elements like we've talked about is the business needs, your organizational structure, your capabilities. What can you do? You can't do more than what you can do. Uh, it's just very evident. Even when you want some certain changes, like we said earlier on, you can strata, stratify them. You can put them in stages. You can put them in different stratas based on what your competencies are currently. And some of the tools you can use to do this is business analysis approach, enterprise limitations, solutions limitation, solution performance goals, solution performance measures, stakeholder analysis results. You're going to have the templates for most of these things later on. And some of your techniques are benchmarking, benchmarking and market analysis, um, business capability analysis, business model canvas, business case, concept modeling, data mining, document analysis. Let me talk about a few of them. Document analysis. Now, you're going to have quite a lot of documents that you've gotten from the different stages. Take, for instance, from the elicitation stage. Take, for instance, from the planning stage. Take, for instance, from the requirement stage. You're going to have a lot of documents. So this is not the time for you to start analyzing those documents and try to start summarizing them, right? Very, very key, very, very important. So document analysis is very critical. Data mining, you see, that is where <laughs> I talk about the, the, the thin line of differences or, 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 or skill set that a BA needs. That's why you see some job description they want a BA to do a little bit of data analysis. They want a BA to do a little bit of uh, workflows, diagrams, and maybe some basic user interfaces and the rest. So that's why in the hands-on hands session of this program, we are going to be infusing some of this skill set for you to be a better BA. Concept modeling, because you have to look out for each of the concepts, for each of your proposals. You have to do like... Uh, what is going to, you want to have an understanding of what is going to look like at the end of the day. Then of course, for your business case, you must understand and have a reason why you should deliver that particular value. And of course, for business model canvas is a, is a framework that tells us we, who our suppliers are, tells us um, how we're going to be doing marketing, what's going to be our pricing model, and all of that. So there's a template for that. We're going to examine that. Then, of course, for business capability analysis, we want to look at what we are capable of doing. Because while analyzing your current state, there's a limit to what you can do. There's even You need to also even look at what your competitive analysis is. Every company is going to have a form of competitive advantage. You might have competitive advantage in terms of your team strength. You might have competitive advantage in terms of your location. You can have competitive advantage over your, your level of experience. You can have 
the uh, competitive advantage because of your affiliation, who you are affiliated to and who you are representing. You might have a uh, competitive advantage based on your number, the number of licenses that you have. So companies have different sort of a competition, a competitive analysis, a, sorry, a competitive uh, um, advantage of one company can become something else another company doesn't have. Take for instance, if I've been doing BA for 10 years and I want to venture in some fields or in some, in some markets, I want to consult for a particular company, I have some sort of competitive advantage that another company does not have. Now, if you have another company that is just three years old, but have affiliation to a very much bigger company that has been in business for the last 20 years. So you see that my competitive advantage to some companies is not going to count for this other company. You can be, um, you can be, uh, what was it called? At a very good geographical location in your market. That can be your competitive advantage. So these are the things you analyze in terms of capabilities. Even your inventory, how, how, what the range of products that you offer. The benchmarking and market analysis, you need to look at what the market is like. So, and where you stand and what is like the acceptable benchmark? What is the acceptable, uh, like, uh, what is the status quo? What is, what is obtainable? What is the, like, the base, baseline? So these things can help you look at your current state because you need this to be able to now tell, okay, I think this is where we are. I think this is what our gap is and this is where we should go, uh, where we should be going to. Don't forget, the job of a BA is to deliver change, is to deliver growth, is to look at current needs and deliver solutions in any sector, be it construction, healthcare, tech, manufacturing, whatever field. Now, if you have to analyze your current state, who are going to be your stakeholders? So your stakeholders are typically going to be your customers because your customers, that's why you have feedback box. They can tell you what you're doing right and what you're doing wrong. So that's one way to be able to understand and analyze your current state. Domain subject expert. I've talked about <laughs> domain subject matter experts and implementation subject matter experts. Like I said, somebody that have a PhD, of course, is a subject matter expert. But you can have a PhD and haven't implemented the solution before. You can't call him an implementation subject matter expert. So there's a slight difference between who is a, is, a, is a subject matter expert and have implemented something, have delivered a solution. Just like you see a data analyst or a BA that have gone through training that, that, has, that is even certified, but have not delivered a project or that have not worked on a real life project. So that is like the slight difference between. And of course the end user, operational support, project manager, a uh, regulator, because these people will give you an insight on what your current states are. That's why you see in some regulatory compliance websites, they have different statuses. They say compliant, non compliant, maybe compliant level this, compliant level this, compliant level this. So a regulator can also tell your, your, your level within your regulatory body can also tell where your current state is. Of course, your sponsor, your suppliers, and maybe better alpha, whatever category of testers. When they test your product, you can be able to ascertain what your current state are or is. What is going to be the output of your current state analysis? So you have your current state description, you have your business requirement, you're able to tell you what your problems are, what your opportunities are, what your dependencies are, what your infrastructure, what your external influences are. Be able to understand that. Now, let's look at phase two, that is defining our future state. We need to be able to define where we are heading to. Don't forget, we want to effect change. If it's a shopping mall, if it's a brand, we're doing BA. We're trying to see what innovation can we bring into the business, can, can help us effect change. If it's a tech company that is trying to launch a particular product as BA, as business analyst, we're trying to see how do we make sure this thing is able to deliver an awesome solution and it meets some certain needs? 
because we're trying to effect change. And it has to be within context. Don't forget. Now, when you're trying to define your future state, the purpose is to determine the set of necessary conditions to meet the business need. Because if your, if your business need, for instance, is a profit of 200% ROI, that is your future state, right? So why you need to define your future state is that if you, plan, if you fail to define that future state, then even when you've gotten success, you don't know that you've gotten success. And when you have not gotten success, you still don't know if you've gotten success. So all purposeful change must include the definition of success. You must define what success is. Business analysts work to ensure that the future state of the enterprise is well-defined, well-spelled out. That is achievable with the resources available. Because if you don't define it, you might not be able to tell what resources that you need to be able to define some certain changes. So what are some of the inputs that you need to define your future states? You need to understand the problem, the opportunities, and the constraints. So these are the things that helps us to define our future state. Elements. So we need business goals, constraints, technology, policies, internal assets, assumptions, and of course, potential value. Some guidelines and tools is our KPIs. What is going to what is going to indicate that we are performing? So we need to have some kind of yardstick to tell if we are doing well. We need to we need to spell it out. Take for instance, if we are running digital marketing programs or digital marketing campaigns for organizations, at the onset of the project, we define what success is. Once we define what success is, success can mean fifty thousand website visitors by the end of ninety days. It can be 10,000 Facebook likes. It can be uh, 500 leads, that is 500 prospective customers. You need to define those KPIs, right? So the key performance indicators and metrics which will be used to determine whether the desired future state has been achieved. So at the end of 90 days, if you don't achieve it, you can return back and look at why you didn't do it. If it's a promissory note, then you have to see how to still achieve that then of course for organizational strategy you want to describe how you're going to affect that for marketing for instance you can say okay for us to affect growth for this enterprise we want to do 100 digital marketing content articles we want to do 100 uh, banners that we're going to put, put across social media platforms like facebook tiktok uh, instagram linkedin uh all of X and all of the other platforms trade. So you, the strategy is how you're going to do it. Key performance index is where do you want to get to? Strategy is how do you want to approach it? How do you want to do it? And you have to be very clear. And some techniques that can help you do uh, future state analysis is to is to get a balance score, business case. Now you're going to find out that some of these techniques, these 50 techniques that you see, they keep reoccurring, right? So you have about 50 major techniques in business analysis. You're going to find out that they keep reoccurring across the different knowledge areas, right? They keep occurring across the different knowledge areas. If you can master up to 30, 35 of them, and be able to use them, use their templates, then you can call yourself a BA. Yes, because some of them are not necessarily are you going to use all of the techniques for all of the different elements or the, all the different stacks. Very, very key. If you can master how to use about 30 of them, then you are good to go. Then who are the key stakeholders for defining our future state? Of course, like I said, our customers can help us do that. Our sponsor, our end users, even our team, our project managers can help us tell what our future state should be. And what is going to be our output at the end of defining our future state? We're going to have our business objective. We're going to describe, we're going to have like a bullet point of where we're heading to. Then we're going to be able to define what feature value are we going to get. At times it's good to put it in metrics, put it in numbers. Let's look at assessing risks. Assessing risks is 3.6.3. Now, 
when you're trying to look at strategy analysis for every strategy, that's why some strategies work and some don't work. Because for every strategy that you have or that you propose, there's going to be a risk associated with that particular strategy. Now, you want to look at the risk that is going to come as a result of you transiting to or into a future state. Now, most of the times, risks are undesirable consequences. There are things we don't plan for. But it is important that you understand these risks, you look at their impact, and you see how to remediate, how to recommend your possible course of action so that there's a minimal impact on your change. So risks analyze for the possible consequence if the risks occurs, impact of those consequences, likelihood of the occurrence, potential time frame when the risks might occur. Very, very key. Either you want to transfer the risks, or you want to accept the risks, or you want to mitigate the risks. Whatever strategy that you try to use in order to take care of the risks, you want to make sure that you have it penned down. And what are your inputs if you want to do risk analysis is your business objectives, your potential value, then of course your requirements. And this requirement that you're going to be needing now is not just requirements off your head. It has to be the requirements that has been prioritized in order of importance. Of course, your elicitation also is the ones that the stakeholders have confirmed that this and this and this and this are the things we want to be changed. These are the things, these are the things we want to be in the end of the project. So those are the things you're going to be considering, not just what you had at the initial onset or, or at the initial or the onset at the onset of the meetings. Some elements here are unknown, constraints, risk tolerance, recommendation. So let's look at this a little bit more in detail, access risks. Access risks is 6.3. 6.3. Now, you have uh, 6.3 unknowns. Uh, of course, things that by a very awesome example of uh, unknown uh, act of God. You have droughts, you have farming, you have inflation, you have um, you have uh, uh, things that you cannot control. Things that in, in most contracts they, they come under force major, right? Things that you you don't have control over. Then of course your constraints. I want to be looking at what they are dependent on and what your assumptions are. Then let's look at this note on recommendation. 6.3. Now, pursuit change regardless of risks. You need to understand that. Now, don't pursue what is too risky. Now, there's some change that might, might, that might cost you so much, but if there's a future benefit, there is something you can look at. Very, very key, very, very important. Pursue risk mitigation. Look at your risks and see how to mitigate them. Don't say, okay, because uh, something is risky, I'm not going to, uh, I'm not going to pursue them and I'm not going to go after them. Risks in business quotes. Risks is very key. An entrepreneur reduces risks in many places in order to focus on what's most important, which is the product. So here, the highlight is what? Reduction of risks. You can't avoid it most times. Persistence is very important. You should not give up unless you are forced to give up. This is a lot more. So every business and every product has risks. You can't get around it. This is... Um, Lee Lacoca, right? So risk is not something you can say, oh, I I, I don't want risks. I, I don't want uh, I don't want change. It's always there. If you don't invest in risk management, it doesn't matter what business you are in. It's a risky business. So you need to look at risks. Risk is very critical. Business is a money game with a few rules 
and a lot of risks. This is Bill Gates. So there's always risks. There's always risks associated with whatever you're doing. Okay. Let's look at some uh, assessing risks, some guidelines. Uh, so most of these things, we'll discuss them, identifying your, the risks, looking at your future state description. And let's look at some techniques. So brainstorming. So if you look at brainstorming in our guide, brainstorming is one of the very, very key and important, uh, uh, look at it here, non-judgmental divergent thinking. Produce broad, a diverse set of opinions in a short period of time. Promotes divergent thinking and problem solving using creative power of group. So how do you do brainstorming? You prepare for brainstorming sessions, right? You prepare, you, 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 you select team members who is going to be responsible for, because until you think on what your risks are through one technique, which is brainstorming, you, you might not be able to tell what your risks are. Then, of course, you have the sessions, you do the summaries, and you can wrap up, right? So this is how to do your brainstorming session. Of course, you have business case, you have decision analysis, you have them detailed in this guide. Business case, for instance, is why are we doing what we're doing? So that is the business justification for project or change initiative by comparing benefit and value to cost and effect to create solutions. So how do you do business case? You first do some needs assessment. Why do I need it? Then you do you check your desired outcomes. Then you assess different alternatives. Most of the times, the solution that you're proposing might not be the best solution. So, but you have to look at it and look at your other alternatives. Then, of course, you cannot recommend a solution. That's how to do business case analysis. Then you have lessons learned. Because one thing about projects, product delivery, is that for every previous project that you have done, there's always a, lessons, a lesson that is going to be learned. And that's why subject matter experts are very key. Subject matter experts are going to tell us, from our experience, I think this is what we should do. I think we shouldn't be doing this. We shouldn't be doing this. We shouldn't be doing this. Okay, who are your stakeholders that are going to help you do a risk assessment? Of course, the regular guys, project managers, your regulator, your sponsors, your suppliers. And what is going to be your output is going to be your risk analysis result. So in the second uh, series, we're going to be looking at 6.4, which is defining change strategy. In change strategy, we're going to be looking at what is our approach? How do we select what our recommendation is to be? Don't forget, a business analyst is to make sure that he or she can deliver appropriate change to the product, to service, to enterprise, to wherever niche you are in. And you must make sure that your solutions are meeting the needs of stakeholders. See you in the next series.